Hello, my friend. Today is a very good day. We are going to be talking about a car that would have made you a little more nervous in a collision than a Ford Pinto. A car with looks straight out of the Jetsons. A car that if you had an engine swap, you would have to worry about radioactive material. And if you haven't already guessed it, we are going to be talking all about Ford's attempt at a nuclear car, the Ford Nucleon. So let's do it. If you're not familiar with this channel, my name's Caitlin. Automotive history is my hobby, and I post a video on a different topic every week. If you like that, press subscribe, press like, and if you don't, that's fine too. Now, let's paint a little picture of the times. It's the end of the 1950s, the Cold War is simmering, and across the U.S., the general populace is becoming fascinated with nuclear energy. You see, this is the beginning of the atomic age with promises of nuclear power stations producing energy that would be too cheap to meter. Electricity that's too cheap to meter? We could really use some of that right now. There were promises that small nuclear reactors would be available for everyday uses in your home. To many, the thought of inexpensive and limitless power, energy, was enthralling. The public welcomed nuclear energy with open arms. The hype of nuclear energy in all of its glory was on the minds of not only just consumers, but also the U.S. government. And Ford was not going to miss out on this opportunity. So Ford tooled with the idea, and finally they had something come to scale. In 1957, they would sh endeavor to create this futuristic nuclear-powered concept car, the Nucleon. Ford showed off the Nucleon to an intrigued public come 1958. What do you think they saw? What would you think if you saw this car? Personally, I think it kind of looks like a little bit of a thumb drive. The Ford Nucleon was to be powered by a nuclear reactor that was placed in the rear of the car. It was devised to use a similar steam engine as used in nuclear submarines, a uranium fission. And here we're gonna sidetrack just a little bit about nuclear powered submarines. So of course it's a worthy digression. In 1955, the U.S. launched the USS Nautilus, which was their first submarine featuring nuclear propulsion. And nuclear power was a great idea for submarines, all right? Think about a combustion engine down there. There's no way you can have a combustion engine running and not get tracked on sonar. Also, combustion engines produce fumes. They gotta go somewhere, like a dolphin in its blowhole. This digression is gonna go on for just a little bit longer. Now, they also did try to use batteries in submarines. And why I mention this is because the use of batteries and electricity in cars today was just the same problem they encountered when trying to use batteries in a submarine. It limited the time they could spend in their operations. There was only so long you could stay underwater before you had to come back up for a charge. However, a nuclear-powered submarine could go on for months and months and months. Also, these nuclear reactors didn't just power the submarines. They also created potable water, electricity, and air. Okay, that's enough about submarines. We'll get back to the Nucleon. And if you're wondering about the looks of the Nucleon, well, the driver and passenger had to be at the very front and the reactor at the very rear. If produced, Ford had a real problem of trying to disperse weight evenly. Similar to nuclear power stations, the Nucleon's reactor would heat water, which would then turn turbines, which would then power the wheels and also any other equipment. And the cycle would start all over again once the water condensed. It was projected that the Nucleon's nuclear reactor could run 5,000 miles until it required a swap. Now, what do you do when you need to swap a nuclear reactor? That means you gotta get rid of nuclear waste. The delicacy of getting rid of radioactive waste, definitely a hindrance. Now, the man behind the Nucleon's very futuristic design was a gentleman named Jim Powers. And this was not Powers' first fantasy whip, all right? He also created and designed, or I'm sorry, he also designed a very futuristic flying concept car called the Volante. Jetsons, anyone? 
Jim Powers is most well known for his design on the 1961 Thunderbirds, affectionately known as Bulletbirds. Now, the Nucleon was not Ford's only attempt or presentation of a nuclear-powered concept car. They also, in 1962, at the World's Fair in Seattle, would introduce the Seattleite. This wild car featured six wheels and a swappable front end. Side note, that's the World Fair. The 1962 World Fair is, was when the introduction of the Space Needle happened. Now, the gentleman behind the Seattleite, the designer behind the Seattleite, his name is going to ring a few bells in a second. It was Alex Tremulus. Alex Tremulus was the designer for one of the car stories that I always love to say. He was the gentleman that helped Preston Tucker design the Tucker 48. And he also did the Retro Thunderbolt, which, very good looking. This is me when I saw it at um, one of the Concourse Elegances. Probably 2020? 2021? Anyways, I'm not going to leave this out because I can't. Now, Tremulous was also behind this really cool military space plane called the Dinosaur. All right, and it really was considered the predecessor to the 1980s space shuttle attempts. The Dinosaur was canceled and never made it off the ground. Now, Ford was not the only automaker that got a little tickly about the thought of nuclear energy. Studebaker and Packard came up with the Astral prototype. This helicopter looking little concept car was supposed to be able to hover over water and be balanced by a gyro ball. Supposed to. Though I think we all know that didn't come to fruition, and also within the next five years of them attempting that prototype, both Studebaker and Packard would not be in existence. I have a full video on each the history of Studebaker and Packard. You ought to watch them. Put the link down below. So everybody was so excited about nuclear energy until they realized that it was going to cost the same as gas, oil, or coal. And you can imagine when they realized that the price would be the same, they probably also were like, well, why would we want to deal with radioactive material? At this time, they had realized it wasn't easy to dispose of that. General opinion started to change. Add a couple of nuclear reactor leaks. The public opinion was over it. Just imagine two nuclear-powered cars having a fender bender. So, with the understanding that nuclear energy wasn't all that they expected it to be back then in the late 50s and early 60s, Ford didn't go forward with their nuclear car. In the reality then and today, the ability to make a nuclear device small enough to fit into a car just hasn't been proven yet. Though, in 2009, GM caught a few headlines by saying they were going to introduce a Cadillac that would be a hundred years, no maintenance, and powered by thorium instead of uranium. All right, guys, well, we're all done talking about Ford and its wild Nucleon concept, huh? It's about time for me to go have a beer, so see you next week. Bye.